<laughs> hey, Tailwinders, uh, here with hey, Troy. Um, awesome message on margin. Thanks, bro. I, I can't think of anyone who doesn't struggle with this in some area Absolutely. of your life. And um, anyway, I know that the way that your process works when it comes to sermon prep, that you get all of this, you're this information collector, you get all this stuff. And there is a bunch yeah. that doesn't get said because you just simply don't have the time. Sure. But I'll tell you, now it's time. So, <laughs> um, could, two things I want. Um, one is, uh, what would be a really good passage of scripture that you wanted to share and didn't get the chance right. to? And what would be the supporting principle that kind of follows that so that we right. can discuss it in the tailwind time afterwards? Well, I think um, the first thing that comes to mind is I had, I had to cut the story of Mary and Martha which is, uh, I think, Matthew 10. Mm -hmm. And um, you have this idea, these two sisters who get together, Jesus visits their house, and Mary, just, you know, overcome with Jesus, sits at his feet and is just enjoying him, hearing him talk and everything. And Martha, who is the gal we typically would admire, she's the go-getter, you know, she's right. a get-her-done kind of gal. Yeah. She's out hustling and working and making it happen. And then she goes to Jesus and said, aren't you concerned that my sister isn't even helping me with all this good stuff? And Jesus turns around and he says... Martha, Martha, you worry about so many things when really few things are needed, maybe even just one. Mary has chosen what is best, and it will not be taken from her. And I think, to me, the overriding principle there is just, man, how, do we, have we learned how to cling to what is best? Hmm. And, we'll, we'll, and how to evaluate that, and how to just strip off all the clutter of life that is so distracting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, because I'm an information junkie, I have a tendency to fill up every second of my life yeah, with too. some kind of input. Um, and just to try to learn to push that aside and just be with Jesus and just enjoy Him and fellowship with Him and be still with Him. And then to see that how that leaks out onto every other area of your life is, that's a worthwhile discipline. It's worth something. It's worth clinging to when you start to find those moments. So, wow, okay. When, when, you, when you're talking about just being with Jesus and being, mm -hmm. what, I mean, how does, that, how does that play out for you? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. I mean, just other than just sitting there? I mean, what? Yeah, I think it, I don't know. And, and I don't know I'm, what I'm it looks like because I've never seen myself I'm, do it. <laughs> but, I'm uh, just saying that because I, I, when, I, when I stop and think about it and when I stop and look at culture, mm -hmm. especially American culture, we don't even know where to begin. I mean, right. when, I, when I think of myself doing that, I'm like, okay, I, where do you start? Right. I think for me, I don't know if anybody else, but there's a couple of things. One is just uh, when you spend, you know, whatever your quiet time, whatever that looks like for you, resist the urge to fill up the void, whether it's in, in your mind or verbally, with noise. <laughs> mm -hmm. With the constant uh, just you know, I need this, I want this, bless me with this, I want to do this, or even praise. Sometimes just to be still and for what might be an uncomfortable time and listen. Say, God, I'm here. What do you have to say? You know, through your word, through your still small voice, just being mm -hmm. present in the spirit and just be still and be grateful that we even have that luxury, that privilege. And I think then... Do you think that even Bible reading can sometimes... Oh yeah, be, like the thing that keeps you from being sometimes. It's it can become. I mean, I don't it can become be the task that fills up oh, the time when it becomes a task, as opposed to this is another way that I can look for Jesus and fellowship with Him and have mm -hmm. Him speak to me. Um, and I'm guilty as that as anybody. I, oh, like, me I too. like to read through the Bible programs and yeah. I'll do that and I'll dig in and I'll check it off the day. I'm like, woohoo, okay, I'm halfway, you know. Yeah. And and the thing is, is I, I <laughs> did a, I did a good thing, right? But I missed the best thing just by busy doing a good spiritual practice, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and then, and there's, an, and this may sound stupid, but I've tried this and this has been really helpful, is I've got one of those watches that you can program to beep every hour. And sometimes when you get through the tasks and the busyness of the day, you just, it's kind of like, I got this guy, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this thing. And for me, just like every hour when that beep goes off, it's a reminder to check in. <laughs> it's a reminder oh. to go, oh yeah, okay, okay, okay. Thank you for this time. What are you trying to say to me? Help me, in the, you know, help me relate. Help me be a blessing wherever so I go. So it's a, it's a discipline of the practice of what I've heard is said is the practice of the presence of God. Yeah, exactly, Brother Lawrence. Yeah, right. 
Yeah, um, and trying it, that's just a technical way of programming that in. And I'll do stuff in my day timer where uh, my computer day timer that you know, has pop-ups, because mm -hmm. I live off my pop-ups, <laughs> and very often a pop-up will come and say, pray. You know, I'll program oh, that wow. in there to show up at various times of the day to say, pray. I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, because I'm, I'm so busy doing, I forget to be, right. just be with him. Wow. Um, so, I mean, I, don't, I certainly don't have this figured out, but it's, uh, it's a pursuit. It's like humility, you know, you never attain right, it. Right, yeah. But you totally. can be in pursuit of it, and the pursuit is what makes it worthwhile. I, okay, one other question, and I know we're kind of going along here for Tailwind, but I don't think you guys care. Um, <laughs> I, you know, when I look at all of those four bars, I feel like that I could have, you know, a parallel um, amongst all of those as far as what margin would look like, right. as far as what priorities would look like. When it comes to time, you know, time with God or, you know, church, ministry kind of being the priority there, what margin would feel like as far as time is concerned with the Sabbath. When it comes to money, that's a really easy one, too. When you're talking about tithe, margin would probably be the savings and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Where I get stuck, and maybe you could help me and, you know, the tailwinders out with this, is when it gets to the relationship stuff, right. what does priorities look like? And what does margin look like mm -hmm. when it comes to that uh, sphere of life right. called relationships? Well, I certainly don't have this one, um, this discipline down. But a buddy of mine shared something with me that was really helpful a long time ago in terms of how you prioritize. And he always said, we tend to turn this pyramid upside down, but my number one priority is my, my relationship with God, mm -hmm. the next with my wife, the next with my kids, the next is with my family. The next is with my friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then comes my vocation. Then comes my hobbies. You know, those kinds of things. That, that all, those, all those things and relationships, they tend to take up time. But, for instance, it's more important for me, it's going to sound weird, but my kids benefit more if I really take care of and nur nurture my relationship with my wife. Oh, right. That, that, so, in other words, the people who really yeah. need me to be a priority in my list get it. And then... That just makes it better for everyone else down the line. But first is just is, is uh, protecting and nurturing right. my relationship with God, then my wife, then my kids, then my, my mom, my family, mm -hmm. then friends. Kind of like how the tide makes your 90% <clears throat> go further. Exactly. It's, it's exactly, yeah. And it makes you more effective everywhere else. Mm -hmm. um, because I only, I'm the only person who can be a husband to Glenn. I'm the only person who can parent my boys. You know? right. I'm the only person who can be the son to my mom. But there's lots of people who can cancel, counsel so-and-so or do this and that. It doesn't mean I don't like to offer myself and give to people. But if I'm doing that and I'm not taking care of the first priorities, right. this is messed up. And it's, it starts becoming meaningless. And it starts to become an idol, to be honest. So, I don't know. That's, okay. that's how I try to approach it. Okay. That's great. Well, guys, uh, we will discuss this some more in the chat. That is that. We will see you there.